Hello, my friends, and welcome to another edition of the Daniel Hendrick Experience. I am super glad you're here today for an amazing podcast with a very dear old-time friend of mine from many years ago in San Diego and uh, Mexico, baritone Salvador Padilla, who possesses an amazing gorgeous baritone voice. He sung all over the world in leading roles in South America, in Europe, in the US, of course. And I'm super glad to have him on and to give his insights and perspective uh, about his opera career. And I'm really looking forward to you guys meeting him. Hey, for those of you who have never heard the podcast or seen it, you can always find it at danielhendrick.com. And there's a little tab there that says podcast. Click on it. And when you go to the website, uh, if you wouldn't mind, subscribe. It's only $3 a month. And it really helps us keeping the lights on, etc. So, my friends, we're in for a treat today. Salvador is not only a great singer and a great person, but he's just filled with stories from around the world. So, I'm looking forward to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's hop to it. And here is my good buddy, Salvador Padilla. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, mi hermano, mi fratello, Salvador Padilla is in the house. Hey, thank you so much for inviting me. You know, I am very excited about this. Uh, you know, we're ready. Whatever you want to do, just I'm ready for you, man. Hey, we're doing it right now, brother. This is how it works. It's, <laughs> it's casual. Nothing is live. So if we screw something up, we can just cut it out. And... You can just cut it off. Perfect. Perfect. I like ah, that. Where are you right now? I'm in uh, San Diego. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Yeah. So you are uh, originally you're from Chihuahua, right? Actually, I was born in that city, Camargo. That's an uh, hour and a half from the capital, Chihuahua. You know. Okay. The state, Chihuahua, the state is the biggest uh, state in in Mexico. You know, it's almost like a uh, Romania sites. You know. Uh huh. That's, yeah. And, um, and that's a very hard variety of uh, weather. You know, you go to the mountains, it's cold, you know, snowing and everything. Uh, and uh, of course, have the desert. You know, that's very strange, you know, a strange state because you can have um, it's extreme, you know, cold, extreme hot. So wow. that's weird. Like Arizona, practically. Andale. <laughs> Yeah, Just, I, guess... you know, Arizona, I, mean, I heard that you're going to San Miguel de Allende. That was so beautiful. That that was the smartest and idea that you just spend some day. If you like it, you stay. If you don't, you just move around. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah I remember we... this guy, remember John Kane. John Kane. He went, uh, went to uh, the pianist, the beautiful jazz pianist. He went to uh, Quito, Ecuador for a few years and Yes. Now he's in um, in um, New Orleans, but see, we musicians, we we love, we love, you know, spend time with different cultures and uh, you know, experience different things. You know, you traveler like, uh, you know, I, I remember uh, when I made you, I said you were coming from Europe like a uh, thirty years ago, <laughs> and invite me for a concert. You remember in San you know, Diego? And, yes, and I. And and I I, I I can tell you that you are one 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 of my inspirations. Just Aww. to continue this, I'm very excited to sing with you. And uh, as we sang the duet from uh, La Boheme, you remember? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You want to know something funny, uh, Salvador? Yes. I uh, since I'm moving to San Miguel de Allende, uh, I have been going through my old cassettes. Yes. And I have hundreds of hours of recordings. And guess what I found? I found yeah. that that concert that we did. Okay. Uh, okay. 30, so, 30 years ago. So I will send it to you on uh, the internet. Well, it will be nice to, to hear, you know, yeah. 30 you years know, ago, some, some Polka Cathedral, I remember. Yeah. If I, 
Yeah, that was great. You were skinny, tall. Uh, Hans, <laughs> what, let, tell me, what happened to you? Hang on. <laughs> so I had uh, a couple of years back, I was singing at a restaurant in uh, uh, Cardiff by the Sea called Chichotis, and I had a, a Chinese student uh, mm -hmm. who was from China, and she was not she didn't really know the customs about how what to say in public and there was a video of me singing up above my head at the restaurant from 30 years ago and i was skinny and she walked into the restaurant she said teacher teacher what happened to you you skinny there now you fat <laughs> i mean you know you know it's just like every stage of life is just you know you have to be comfortable with you know you start doing weight and stuff, but yeah, this exactly you don't have to be important. It's important to feel good about what you said inside, you know. And how you yes. look, you know. Yes, exactly. Well, I'm super excited, and my wife Pilar is excited about moving to San Miguel de Allende. Hey, hi to Pilar, you know. I remember he's a great sure. artist. Yeah. Great couple. Congratulations, man. You're gonna she have is. so much fun there. Um, oh, what a city. It's a place for creativity, you know, creativity. You have to, yes. around you see so much uh, art, you know. You, you were know, there during COVID. I was there, yes, correct. Uh -huh. I, I think with, uh, um, Arturo Ponce. And, uh, right. And we spent um, the Thanksgiving, you know, that was uh, 2000, 2020, 2020, 2022, I, I believe. The, uh, we have well. That's a place that uh, well. There were everything was good. wasn't really working for us uh, musically because everything was were closed. Close. But we found places. We found uh, um, guitar players, and uh, we, we were singing around. This beautiful, beautiful. Yes, I saw that on Facebook. You guys were there, and I'm like, wherever Salvador is. 2019, I was in. Uh, Bulgaria, uh, Varna, in the opera house there, doing the uh, uh, this uh, opera studio, the Varna opera studio, uh -huh. uh, called the Master International Aviamento Lirico. I studied with uh, Ar Armando Agostini, the baritone from La Scala. No? Wow. And, uh, prepare uh, Barbaro Sevilla, uh, the role of Don Bartolo. Okay. The maestro Mauricio Barbacini is a great conductor. You know, when they met do the Barbaro Sevilla, they call him because he's probably the best Rossini conductor in Italy. Well, uh -huh. happy to work with him. After that, I moved uh, to Italy. I went to Italy for some audition. Uh, my first audition was in Naples. Naples. Um, well, I got this contract to do <laughs> La Traviata with my first audition in um, Teatro Ar Argentina in Roma. You know? Wow, okay. So, but that was this little role that uh, Baron Dufol, you know, uh -huh. I was very excited. I was ready to start doing the rehearsal period, but, you know, the COVID came <laughs> along. Uh -huh. Right. So, um, actually, before that, I went to Paris because our friend uh, Sasha Butrus got married with the uh, the ambassador uh, from uh, from Mexico to uh, to uh, France. Okay. So in sang with uh, that. I went to Germany. After that, um, you know, the cancellations start happening. Um, I have my flight to Italy, back to Italy, to do the opera, and that's it. That was canceled. Everything was canceled. Wow. I went to Spain because I had my flight back to Los Angeles from, from Barcelona. But it was canceled. I stuck in Zaragoza. Zaragoza. The <laughs> between Madrid and uh, Barcelona. Barcelona. You know? uh -huh. Stuck for four months. But I think that was the most wonderful experience in my life, man. How the, wonderful. The pandemic. You know, we were there at the hotel for a couple of weeks with no food, man. We were eating from the little machines. Wow. You know, today, maybe I'm going to have some nuts or something like that. <laughs> that was crazy, man, because we didn't know what. Mm. 
We couldn't leave the hotel for two weeks. After that, we opened it. But there was a piano in the lobby. You okay. know, there were three people in the hotel. <laughs> I never saw these guys. So I play, you know, hours and hours by myself. Uh -huh. the, we look, I feel like a, a haunted hotel, you know. There's nobody there. I could hear noises, you know. But Wow. Anyway, so I have this idea when I met uh, with the, the owner of the hotel. And I say, you know, my teacher was singing on the balcony. I, I saw him. Then they sent me some video of my... Why will you do the same, you know? So I copied to my teacher. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Doing for 106 days, every single day, going out on the balcony with a piano and a, a, a local singer from there, and a Del Rio, uh, you know, a pop singer. But yes. He, he knew all these Mexican songs and everything. So 106 days performing every day at eight o'clock we get out and perform for the people so after that i, I told the uh, the owner I said, you know what why we don't invite the local artists are here with us yes you know next day he has <clears> a <throat> list of um singers performing uh guitar players dancers uh you know that was great uh, um, you know orchestras choirs wow so, after that, you know, there's just uh, nothing, you know, that was like a very rewarding, you know, feel good. Just yes. To, uh, we didn't know what's going to happen. No flies. The city was locked. We couldn't leave <laughs> the city. You couldn't go anywhere. No, couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> but in July, they opened the flights from Madrid to Mexico City. Oh, so the possibility God. right there to me. <laughs> so I went to... Um, um, Madrid and fl flew to Mexico City. Mexico. Wow. So I remember seeing a video of you on mm -hmm. Facebook. There you were in the balcony, and there were people across the street from their balcony singing yeah, with you. <laughs> it was amazing. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> yes. And, uh, and, um, well, you know, that's... Um, I almost stay in Spain, you know, because yeah. you know, I, I was getting comfortable with the people, and I, uh, I always feel like a, Spain is my second, you know, second home. You know. Amazing. Yeah. Well, I've always admired that about you. You travel the world, and you seem to fit in no matter where you go. You know, we are people <clears throat> of the world, you know. Yes. You know. Uh, any difference, uh, you know, people are the same here and yeah. China. You know? you That's know, what a lot yeah. of Americans are asking me. Well, aren't you nervous about moving to a foreign country where, and a different language and culture? And I just laugh and I'm like, hello. First of all, I'm pretty much Mexican as it is. <laughs> I think that uh, you are more Mexican than me, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I remember they used to call you Pancho, right? Yes, Pilar calls me Pancho. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God, my brother. It's so great to see you. So tell us, <clears throat> how did you get started singing? Uh, did you do, like, church choirs or school? Or what was your beginning? You know, believe it or not, uh, I was a uh, drummer. A drummer? A, ch a church, you know? Wow. So, with the Sundays and with the guitar and bass, and we, we do some, uh, you know, you know, the songs for the church and stuff every Sunday. And start playing some of the rock, uh, long hair, black shirt. Okay. And, you know, I was 18, but after, you know, I went to study um, fine arts school is when I, I discovered my, you know, my singing, you know, I didn't actually it wasn't my idea to sing. I was learning guitar and piano, and some of the teachers say, "Hey, you have a good voice," because I heard some vocalization around. I said, I said mm. "What is that?" You know, I, I, and I walk into the classroom and say, "That was uh, my the teacher was my teacher, uh, not the time because she said, "Hey, 
Are you want to take some lessons? No, no, no. I'm just curious because I heard these noises. And like, bah, 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 bah. That was, <laughs> you know, but I said, but you know what? I want to try it. I want to come back tomorrow. But six months later, I was singing at the opera. <laughs> wow. You know. <clears throat> and how old were you? Um, the role of uh, Gaston, the small role. Sure, you know? sure. Yeah. But you know, they everybody thought I was a, I was a tenor, you know, because my it was lyric, lyric, uh huh, and and pushing the voice that was getting crazy because I, I was getting frustrated, and I sang the role after that the role of Alfredo, you know, cracking some high notes and you know, wow, impossible. I was so disappointed that this is not for me, you know. Yeah, folks, the um, role of Alfredo in, in La Traviata is a tenor role. Yeah. yeah. So <clears throat> after that, I say, well, I have to find a, a good teacher. I went to El Paso, Texas, find uh, Lazaro Ferrari. That was a legendary tenor, Italian tenor, a uh, very good friend of uh, um, uh, Giuseppe Stefano. Let me tell you, when with this guy, I say, no, 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 no. You're a baritone, man. You're a lyric baritone. Of course, you gonna sound like a tenory quality, but no, no, be careful. Right. You are a, definitely a baritone. Um, so I, I prepared the role of, uh, you, know, the, you know, the Belcore was my right, first right. role. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, from that, I just continued doing the, wow. the baritone. You know, baritone, well, you know they, yeah. they uh, I had Gino Quilico on. And the world famous baritone, and he told me the same thing that for much of his career, people were always telling him he was a tenor. Well, this me, this me, yeah. That's it. But you have to oh. find your your lane where your voice feels good, and only you, you know, can decide that. that. That's why you know when you go to school, they always uh, made you sing a center, you know, center of the voice. Yes, and, and with time, see how. The voice go, you know, if you go high, but first year, always, always in the middle, you know, center. So um, I feel very comfortable center, yeah. That uh, so I have a scholarship going to Spain. I went to the singing school in Spain. I write to. Uh, I had the contact with the, la maestra Isabel Penagos. I, I studied with school. her. Yes. Wow! In New York, it. I studied with her in New York. Yeah, yeah. Now, I give her, a, give her a call and say she, I, I cannot see you, but I'm going to Portugal for this seminar, singing seminar in northern Portugal, Villarreal, in the the Palacio Mateus. It's a wine wine uh, company. So what happened? She said, if you wanna come, you know, come to my house tomorrow, and. Um, I was there early morning. And, wow! Uh, uh, um, limousine from <laughs> pe to pick her up. So I, I went to uh, Portugal with her. You know, wow! I um, her, um, her uh, seminar, but the same thing. She wanted me to sing tenor. I said, I don't know. Uh. You know. So well, I did. I sang the concert at Portugal as a tenor. You know, no more than G, but they try to push the boys. They said, it's not me, man. I don't feel good. You know, but um, I said, you know, I want to, my idea to come to Spain is to get into the singing school, Escuela Superior de Canto in Madrid. Mm. I said, no, 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 no. You know, you, well, you, you know, I'm the director, she said. So you are in no problem. I didn't know yes. that she was. There. So I was with the right people, right? So I got into the school, but I started with Ramon Regido. I said, you definitely a baritone. Yeah. And I stay with that. Good. You know? And yes, and, uh, you know, singing Sarsuela was very good experience with singing the Sarsuela, singing, you know, uh, around yeah, Europe. And, and if you don't mind, uh, Sal, can you explain to the audience what Sarsuela is? Sarsuela, that's like a the operetta, operetta, you know, from but, from from Spain. Mm -hmm. Spain, that's uh, like a musical, but in Spain, with um, dialects, but with the difference of uh, the Italian uh, opera, 
they uh-huh. have the bel canto, they have the dialogues, but with music. You know, yes. when you sing dialogue in, in Sarsuel, you don't have any music. So if you sing your uh, romanza or aria, wherever it is, it's the, the dialect is no music. Right. You know, that's, uh, so it's kind of like an American uh, operetta almost, right? Yes, it's sort of musical, but, uh, mm-hmm. you know, because all these uh, uh, um, Sarsuela composers, uh, uh, they were uh, studied with the Italian school. So they have the, the same school, yes. but with, with uh, you know, with the Spanish subject, you know? Yes. And didn't Placido sing a lot of the Sarsuela early on? Or? Placido Domingo, he was, uh, he was born in Madrid, you know, but he grew up in Mexico. Um, yes. Bill and Placido Domingo, father, um, they were they they have Sarsuela company that travels around uh, Mexico. Mexico. And I remember, I remember they came to Mex to Chihuahua to see them. Wow. Uh, Placido Domingo was their pianist. Oh my God! Wow. He wasn't singing at the time. He was the pianist at the company. You know, and um, but. He starts singing and stuff, of course, uh, son of uh, two singers, you know. He starts singing and he has his debut in San Diego. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah. Was, was it La Bohème or Tosca? Oh, Tosca. Tosca. Oh, La Bohème, I don't remember. I think that was Tosca. Yeah. Okay. And he had terrible reviews because all his, he cracked all the high notes. Ah. You know, he was very sad, but. You know, that was his beginning. He never sure. up and continued doing his career. And look, Placido Domingo, I had the opportunity to sing with Placido in Sevilla one time when uh, the Expo Sevilla. My company, I was working with La Antología La Sarsuela, Jose Tamayo, coming from uh, Israel. Um, I was doing tour a couple tours in South America. So when we came to uh, Sevilla, to the expo, we were a lot of singers. You were two baritones, and like a by tenors, you know. But on the weekends, they have the stars that, that was Placio Domingo, Monserrat Caballé, Jose Carreras, Luis Lima. Oh but my God. The opportunity to perform with Placido because actually I was working as a cover at the time, you know, with this, uh, the, the baritone um, Antonio Ramayo. But at one time I said, was the last time Plus, you say, hey, give me the opportunity. He said, we use one time with sure, sure, you can dress and stuff. So I that was that was when I was like a 24 years old. That was like a dream came true because you know, we were singing with Placido Domingo. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what a uh uh incredible opera singer. And what I loved about him, too, I mean, he could do it all. He was not only the great singer, but a great actor. And then later in his career, he was the conductor, right? So I was in L.A. one time. Uh, I think it was Tosca I went to see, and he was supposed to conduct. And the tenor uh-huh. got sick. So Placido sang the role, and so, and the assistant conductor conducted. <laughs> all at the last minute, right? And I'll never forget because the reviews came out the next day and uh, they destroyed Placido. They were saying how terrible it was. And I thought to myself, were you at the same opera I was at? Because he was pretty freaking amazing. <laughs> yeah, I don't believe that. I heard stories about that, about Placido he's saying that the first, the, the same critic that destroyed him at the Met. You know, ah, no, 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 in San Diego, you know, when he, a few years later, right. he, he was, you know, in saying, love with him. For... Wow. Yeah. You never know. You know, you, know, you just take it, if, you know, if it's bad review, that's okay. You just take it. Yeah. If it's good, take it too. So, yeah. Reviews, you know, you never know. You know, I, just... I've had a few bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Everybody at some point gets a bad review. That's for yeah, sure. Well, no, no, that doesn't mean anything. Man. <laughs> <laughs> a bad review. This is yes. It's wow. a bad experience. Yeah. So uh, 
I understand and actually saw some video of you singing uh, the baritone role in Leli Sir D'Amore with uh, uh, the company in Tijuana. You sang that yes, there, right? Yes. With Jose yes, Medina. Um, yeah, um, you know, a few years, Jose Medina, yeah, that, I, uh, you know, um, most of my career, you know, like uh, in opera, we always involved with Jose Medina around He Actually, all the operas that I sang in in this area, Tijuana, he's he's been the stage director, you know, for Excellent. a long time. You know, and I had the opportunity to sing with him in 1994 in, with the Glendale Symphony, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, Dorothy Chandler Pavilion with uh, Larry Giffrin conducting. Uh -huh. And um, that was the first time that I sang with him. And um, 30 years later, I, well, no, not 30, but 20, 25 years later, I sang uh, um, Barrio of Sevilla with the Chihuahua Philharmonic. He was wow. the stage director, but he was a tenor as well. Doing wonderful. I don't know why he stopped. He should continue. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know. He was amazing. Yeah. I used to have to compete against yeah. him, and he was always beating me in the competitions. <laughs> I heard. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. And then uh, we know, would see yeah, each I other in, in New York, and we would share the cabs together, go into the same audition, right? So. I like his personality. He's a funny oh. guy. If you, you suffer from depression, you call Jose Medina. He will help you. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Danny, you Danny. Know, he you, always you. calls me. Hey, Danny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very cool. So we met, If I correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. wasn't it at the Westgate many, many years ago that where we met? Yeah, uh, you know, in 1992, um, I came to San Diego vacations. I was uh, coming from from Spain and um, spent three months in Chihuahua. And before coming back to San Diego, to I mean, to Madrid, I <clears throat> stopped. Yeah, when I go to San Diego, I heard beautiful things about San Diego. Walking on downtown, Second Street, with a hotel, Wesley Hotel, I heard a high note, and I walk in. <laughs> that was Sylvia Lorraine playing on the piano. Wow. Herman Salerno singing there, too. This is when I met Herman Salerno, the great... Sure. Argentinian. Italian, yeah. Yeah. Italian-Argentinian. Yeah. And, um, you know, I love it. I stay, you know. Went back a few months and come back to San Diego, and that's it. You know, amazing. You know, I love the weather. I love the people. You know. Yes, it's a beautiful, beautiful city. Town, beautiful town. You know. Yeah. Just beautiful. Everywhere you look, it's just beauty. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, for those of you out there around the world that don't know about the Westgate Hotel in San Diego, it's this very elegant European style hotel, and they have a bar downstairs, a piano bar. And for years, literally back since 1978, uh, I have gone there to that piano bar and it sung oh. since 1978. Yeah. And and over the years, you had different people playing in there. Uh, and when I met uh, Salvador, I think it was Sylvia playing, right? Yes. But then after Sylvia, on Monday nights, came one of my mentors, Julio de la Huerta, uh, also from Mexico. And he had the most amazing, transcendent 20-plus years on a Monday night. And it was the most successful night they ever had in San Diego, anywhere. Always packed, famous people coming in singing and what was your experience like with well, well, we went out with one uh, yeah that, that was i met uh, julio uh, yeah around 20 years ago when um, i was uh, with uh, juan manuel morones you remember the composer yes manuel? took me to um, julio's de la huerta mother's birthday okay and you see this when i met julio and they got the guitars i was amazed with the 
you know, the abilities of uh, yes. they play guitar and composing songs. You know? <laughs> and he yeah. has his brother, Pepe, Pepe de la Huerta. He was uh, another great guy, great musicians. Yes. Bohemians, 100%. You know, it's how we connect because we are Bohemians. Yes. You know, including <clears throat> you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, you know, we love of music of you know this is great and i had the opportunity to record some of his songs and you know you know things just how many many shows like a oh. hundred shows yeah with easy him, yes with him for 25 years man right yeah and uh we were sad that he decided to just quit i don't understand that i really don't understand you know how a person decide to quit this drastically, you know, like a, he shouldn't quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I do have a perspective about that okay. uh, because, you know, I had the 15 years uh, singing at Chichotis, you know, and, and I realized why he quit. You just get burnt out. You get burnt out of doing the same thing. I mean, he was so successful there for 20 plus years. Yeah, I played and I, show with him, you know, you know, you know, when I finished there is when you came in. Right. <laughs> and, and, you know, restaurant been part of my life, you know, you know, that's a good, good way to, you know, to make some money and Sure. To well, to you know your abilities of playing yes. the piano. You know, I'm not a pianist, but I can play a little bit. You know, I, you I can, do. You do great. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I always admired that because my piano playing was very. I mean, I never had any lessons. I just had to learn to to do it by writing songs. That's how I learned. So you have to so many abilities. You know. Mm -hmm. A writer, you know, incredible. You are a complete uh, artist. The, my question is: You never try um, painting? Or I did. I did try painting. Yes, and I suck at it. <laughs> you know, so many fingers like a uh, Pavarotti. Yeah, Pavarotti. You know, uh, the same Caruso. He he used to. Yes. Use drawing and stuff like that you know i have an original you probably have seen it at my house i, I saw could've... it i you still know, I have it. it it's right here let behind me this me is a... i remember mr um, that was a pianist uh famous pianist uh, here that gave it to you trilo grillo trilo, was, uh, george trevillo yes trevillo. George trevillo i worked with him as well yeah who and played yeah. for Björling in concerts. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. He was his pianist for, I heard, seven years, something yes. like that. Yeah. Yes. He taught me a lot. And a lot of the cassettes that I have, I was telling you about, that I've been huh? recording onto my computer, are my lessons with George Trevillo, you know. And I remember one time he told me... Um, he had a very special kind of humor and he and he said to me dan dan you have to remember every note is not an orgasm you have to save the orgasm for the ending <laughs> <laughs> and you have to keep it for the climax exactly the <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But this is a high experience also that because you are so generous you know like a, you want to give from the beginning but and I have the experience to sing for the Pavarotti International Competition. Uh -huh. And the thing is, hey, you, you give it too much at the beginning, man. You have to <laughs> build it. Yes. Build it. You, and you have to build it to the climax. Yes. You start with the climax, exactly the same thing. <laughs> you don't have a place to go, you know? Right, right. You just have to build it. And well, it's true. It's you true, remember what what one of my idols was Armando Sierra, and whenever I heard that guy saying it, it was full blast from the beginning, you know. And it was you know, I had the opportunity to work with you guys, La Costa Garden. Remember? Yes, yes. 
is to go outside and talk to him. This was a nice guy. Yeah. That was a nice guy, man. Noble man. Yes. You know. Yes. Noble yeah. man. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a great guy. And what a voice. Oh, my God. At the time, he sounds more like a baritone, like a Elton tenor. Yes. You know. But I heard some of the recordings that he was a little bit more lyric yes. in the beginning. And um, one of the guys that won the Metropolitan Auditions, right? Yes. Yep. Uh, yeah, and, uh, about five or six months ago, I just sang at his funeral. Yeah, yo, oh, I heard about that. Very sad. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, well. But wait, you know, we all have uh, people that inspire us like that, right? Did you have a, a singer that inspired you coming up? Well, um, actually, when I was very young, when I was seven years old, um, I was seen in, you know, in the outside, in the garden. And, um, and I heard these voices. Like, what is that? I could, I, that? My first time in my life, I heard that, something like that. That was uh, my neighbor singing with the piano. To, next door was the piano teacher. She was uh, like a elementary school piano teacher and was his... Um, your son-in-law, and he was singing a baritone, uh, Fidel Rangel. That was like a, from other world. I couldn't understand that. And it still gave me that sensation. Chills, wow. You know? And that's why I started doing that, you know. <laughs> Later on, I continued that, and I had the opportunity to sing with him. You know, at the opera, La, La Traviata, my first opera, I was doing uh, Gaston, and he was doing German. Wow. Yeah. And that was one of my inspirations, you know. You know, a, a lot of singers, but, you know, act actually that was, uh, impact me very, very seriously, because seven years old, hearing that voice like, oh, Yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, that's how impact on me, yeah. Amazing. Well, if huh? you don't mind, I want people to hear you, you, uh, Salvador. And huh? I have a recording of you here uh, from the bother, uh, Barber of Seville. Okay, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. here we go.
Bravo, my friend. Wow. Your voice. Your voice, you just keep going. I mean, it's just amazing oh, how great you sound. You have to keep it. You have to keep going, you know? Absolutely. You know, I find, because I was going to different repertory, but they say, you have to do this. You have to do some Rossini. Some, uh, uh -huh. The first invitation was uh, actually Barbara Sevilla, but doing... The other role that was a uh, bass role that's uh, Don Basilio. Uh -huh. I feel so comfortable, you know, in Chihuahua, mm -hmm. you know. And I say to Jose I don't know if I can do the bass. Uh, let me try it out. That was so easy. <laughs> that was so easy. I think I'm going to go that direction after that. Good like for it. you. Good choice. Doing Rossini and, you know. Don, 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 uh, Bellini from uh, Donizetti. Donizetti, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to keep doing this. You, uh, mm -hmm. um, did you see my list of audition, audition, audition list? Yes. Rossini, Donizetti, you know, uh, Mozart. <laughs> yeah, you found your, your niche, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to be comfortable, you know? Mm -hmm. and, it moves easy, like a bass baritone. It's like a right there. You get some nice lower quality with the high notes. Right. Yes. And um, um, that's it. You have to just uh, go with nature. You know, I'm almost 60 years old, man. Eh? I cannot wow. do more German. I was trying to do it. Uh -huh. but there's no risk going on. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. You know, I can do it, but I don't want to push it anymore. I just right. want to feel comfortable. I want to feel you know, relaxed singing. Yes. So that's that's the, what I want to do. Just continue doing this. Just continue with Rossini, Mozart, and Donizetti. That my my good friends. <laughs> wow, that is fantastic. Yeah, and like right there, folks, uh, you won't be able to, if you're listening on the podcast right now, you won't be able to understand. The guy is an incredible actor as well. and But later we'll be posting it on YouTube, so you'll be able to actually see what he does. So you are unique, I think, because not only are you a great singer with a very beautiful voice, but you've always really acted your parts as well. What do you think you about know, I See, you know, I, I used to uh, study, you know, acting, you know, actually was one year of doing touring with this, uh, um, you know, company, you know, there was uh, a school, but we were doing La Comedia del Arte. Okay. It's the beginning of the year, but this is theater on the streets, practically. Wow. But I learned you have to move around, you know, I learned from others, you know, it's just like, a, but I love acting. I love I, I I love to connect with the character. Actually, I study yeah. that character. I, I, yeah. I you know you are a character, my friend. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> you, you look for details. Yes. You know, and you know, I have great reviews, you know, on my acting, especially in the Rigoletto, when I sang Rigoletto for the first time and just one time and say I can do it, but I don't want to sing it anymore. Uh-huh. <laughs> I go that direction, you know, that, that, that was a good, smart uh, decision of me because, you know, when you're young, you just want to do everything. You know, I found the probably the biggest mistake of my life was doing uh, Il Tabarro, you know. That was a mistake. Man. That was, yeah. That's okay, you know. Just one time and that's it. Just, you know, I like, um, you know, of course, the, from the Triptico of Puccini's song, um, Janice Kiki, that's good, but Il Tabarro, you know, that was, I, I wasn't ready for that, you know. That gotcha. Was, that well, was, I made a few of those mistakes myself. Uh, yeah. What do you think is the, the, the role that fits you the best? You know, I think that Dulcamara. Dul really? Dulcamara is my role. Dulcamara. Okay. I, I think that Don Bartolo, these two roles that I be singing lately. That's the direction that I'm going to continue. Yes. And I love the characters. I love the coloratura. 
This is what I, this is long. I didn't know that I can do this. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's yeah. it's like that's it's coloratura, like, man. Coloratura is my my um, ability. You know. Well, yeah. You've you've always kept your voice lyric, so that's I'm sure why you're able to do that now. It didn't I'm get heavy. Doing Rossini, um, I think that is I'm bringing my voice back on placement. Excellent. Know? But naturally, no, I don't have to do. They just have to sing Rossini, and your voice come back to play. Or the, mm. you know, of course, I I work every day. You know, good. The, the voice, yeah, the repertory. But I have to choose the right repertory. You know, you know. Uh, I was around this area. You know, trying to sing. Uh, you know, they gave me La Traviata. And I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try, but I didn't do it. You know, I changed my yeah. mind. My mind yeah. because I think that that was that was uh, that was a mistake to sing the role anymore. I don't want to sing it anymore. That's it. It's, yeah. I sang it with the uh, Northwestern University. Yeah. And, uh, so, so I let sang me it with, uh, I'm, I'm sorry with uh, San Francisco, but when I was in the Merola program. Yes. Right. I was okay. I was in my thirties and. I could I did it on the on tour with the you know mm. Western, <clears throat> Western Opera Theater with the maestro Giuseppe Colaneri. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, that was a good experience, but you know, yeah, I don't want I, it's not me anymore. Not yeah. So folks, um for those of you who are not really in the opera scene out there, an opera singer cannot just sing any part it's like uh, a weightlifter lifts certain weights within a certain category and if you go outside of that you're going to injure your body and a lot in the past in the history of opera even great singers like <clears throat> one of my mentors giuseppe de stefano went outside of what he should have done and ended up getting in trouble i mean de stefano's voice as great as it was was not an otello voice that's for sure. And uh, Salvador was talking about, he sang a couple of roles that he learned he, he shouldn't do that. I did the same thing. But sometimes you get people offering you money and contracts, and it's easy to fall down that trap. Uh, but for him, at almost now 60 years old, to be sounding so youthful again, and what is bringing it back is, <clears throat> or helping, is singing the Rossini and singing the more coloratura stuff. See Mozart. Mozart. Wow. You no, know? Donizetti. You know, right? The... Yes. Bring your voice so, back. <clears throat> so, for you, who are your top three or four baritones of all time? Well, that's how like a... <laughs> you know, there's a lot of good baritones, but you know, inspired. Uh... Ettore Bastianini, you know? That Ooh. <laughs> yeah, not bad, right? You know, um, Leonard Warren, you know. That's, That's my favorite, yeah, yes. Warren, what else? What else? So, so many, so many. The good. Leonard Warren Largo is unbelievable. It's like how he, he has that uh, line in the high <laughs> Like nothing, man. Yeah. yeah. But this is his... Uh, his cavity, he has yeah. a bit like this, you know. Uh -huh. and the, it's the cavity that give you high palate. You Amazing, know? So right? Born with that, you know, and uh, he's one of them, yeah? Yes. You know, Warren, mm -hmm. that was like a, you know, I was listening to him, you know. So many, so many good baritons, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, Gino Quilico, Gino Quilico, wow. because I was preparing the area, the 82. Uh huh. Balvin uh, Mascara, preparing for uh, the Bel Canto Foundation of Chicago. I have the opportunity to study with Giorgio Tozzi. Wow. You know, I, and actually, I sang that area at the master class with Giorgio Tozzi and uh, uh -huh. in, uh, Northwestern University. With the Belcanto Foundation of Chicago, they got a scholarship. But I, I was previous, previous uh, 
to that, I, I was listening to Quilico singing at the bed. I like the way that he plays the voice. You know, I noticed something that he, he plays his voice to the right side or to uh -huh. the left side, but he always do this. Are, are you talking about Louis Quilico or Gino Quilico? Gino Quilico. Okay. No, no, no. Louis Quilico. Father. Gino. The father is the son. son. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking about Gino, you know? Okay. And he was doing um, Balloon Mascara with Pavarotti at the Met. Ah, wow. You know, I, 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 I saw his recording maybe a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, we have had uh, uh, a lot of great examples that we got to listen to growing up, right? Yes, yes, yes. Amazing. Yes. And what do you think about these young uh, tenors that are out there? It just seems like there are so many great tenors in the world today. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you know that's, uh, the competition is getting... <laughs> Hard, hard, you know. Yes. The time was easy to win a competition. Now it's impossible. <laughs> right. The level of, uh, you know, of, uh, you know. And so many Mexican tenors. Yeah. They, this, uh, especially in, they love Mexican tenors in Europe. Uh huh. You know, I don't know what it is, but, you know, uh, it's the, uh, the the quality of the singing it's just like a they call it terciopelo i don't know how they, you say it in, in but it's it's that uh warmness yes of the quality of the, the voice. beauty yes the beauty so many tenors mexican tenors are doing do you think do you think a part of it is the language the the way they speak or yeah um you know they 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 sing everything like spanish uh-huh they you know, the Spanish is more, almost like Italian. And I have the experience to study with uh, John Sutherland in San Francisco. Oh, and my God. told me that. He said, um, I have a few areas prepared for her. I say, no, 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 I don't want I don't want to hear any areas from you. I want to hear Sarzuela. Wow. And John I, Sutherland. Yeah, I said, what? I want you to sing everything in Spanish. So every session with her, that was in Spanish. I say, why in Spanish? Because when you sing your language, the voice come naturally. Ah. You know? So I say, when you sing, think Spanish. And your voice is right there. And that's right. You know? And what Mexican singers, we, we do that. We sing like Spanish, everything. You know, got Even it. The, you know, so <laughs> uh -huh. vowels, vowels, you know, the vowels, just clear vowels, forward vowels, you know, yeah, oh. yeah that's you know. amazing, so cool. Well, Salvador, you have been a blessing in my life for many years, and folks, for those that you that don't know this person, he is perhaps the most genuine person you'll ever meet in your life. He is well, the real deal. <laughs> and he's a great singer. Uh, in a lot of ways, you remind me of Armando because you, you're very charismatic, but you're very, very humble. You know, but this is what I like about him. Yes. You know, because I connect with him that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk to him so many hours, you know, yeah, you know, we were working with you over there in uh, La Costa Garden. Right, I remember. I just found a concert that I did on Valentine's Day before I went to sing in New York from La Costa Gardens mm -hmm. <laughs> on Valentine's Day. But you, you know, invited me there. <clears throat> you were you you invited me, you invited me to sing that place. Okay, you know? wow. So yeah. you know, a few a couple of years before he died, uh, he was living in. Um, uh, Spring Valley, folks, which is a like a suburb of San Diego. Mm -hmm. And he was very ill with diabetes and just living in a room. And he didn't have any recordings or a CD player or anything. So when I found that out and I said, he doesn't even have his own recordings. Well, I, I have the biggest collection of Armando Sierra in the world because I, I 
uh, taped him wherever I went. But anyhow, I went, I bought a stereo for him and I copied his CDs uh, and some of my CDs and I took it to his house so that he could listen to the greatness of his voice when he was singing Cello e Mar or Estrellita or uh, he was even on the Merv Griffin show singing Vesti la Juba. No, Vesti la Juba, man. Yes, yeah. I mean, Vesti la Juba was fantastic. Yes, yes. And, and he loves you. I love and that I, guy. Yeah. Two times, two times he, he told me, Daniel, I love Daniel. Many times he told me, yeah. mm. yes, yes, you know? Yeah, he was, uh, I got chills right now just thinking about how he touched my life. And now when I hear back the recordings of me singing earlier, uh, I didn't realize it at the time, but now <clears throat> being in my senior years, I hear the influence of Armando on my singing. Uh -huh. It's just like I hear the Mario Lanza effect, right? I just, the people that you idolize, in some ways you mimic them. Of course, naturally. <clears throat> That's how mm -hmm. you're going you're gonna to do, uh, you know, subconsciously you're gonna you, you're yeah. gonna be you're gonna do him you know you're gonna do whatever he does it's gonna it's gonna um, influence you you know yes yeah. well brother yeah. thank you again for being on the show today you are absolutely delightful love you i love you man i love you too brother <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see i told you i told you you would be fine here right it's you know i'm not you know, it's just like, uh, I don't, you know, never mind that. We have yeah. good luck. And, uh, we so do. I, and I, say I, hi to all of the family in San Diego and tell them uh, I love them and miss them. But, but where uh, are you right now? Yeah, right now I'm in Phoenix, Arizona okay, okay. At, at my house. But the house is going on the market in a couple of weeks and we're moving to San Miguel. And well, We'll go uh, visit you there. Absolutamente. Yes. Really? Are you kidding? Yeah. That's one of the reasons we want to go there. Because we can, you know how we love to have parties. You've been to the parties at my house. so Oh, no, many, many parties. <laughs> All right, my brother. Oh, yeah. folks, before we go, I just want to remind you to go to the website, danielhendrick.com, and there you can find my book, know you know which chronicles my journey of becoming an opera singer losing my voice and then getting it back and singing all over the world and it's just chronicles the ups and downs of an opera career so check that out and folks thanks for being here we're every sunday at danielhendrick.com and every podcast in the world carries it <clears throat> thanks again salvador padilla for being here god bless everybody see you next you. sunday